Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my bookshelf tour. wanting to film an updated bookshelf tour for quite a while now. The last one I did was like two years ago at this point and since then my reading taste has definitely changed. My shelves have absolutely changed. I actually got some new shelves which I, I love them so much. I've had them for like a month and I'm obsessed and I just wanted to kind of show you guys my updated collection which I'm so freaking excited about so I hope you guys are too. Just to answer this question now all of my shelves are the Billy bookshelves from Ikea. A basic but a staple and I love them so we are just going to get into this. I'm not going to go through every book individually, but I will probably spend a decent amount of time going through certain editions that I like, just talking about some of my favorite books, like that kind of thing. So even though I'm not going through each book individually, I still have a feeling this is going to be a pretty long video because I am indeed a book reader, as well as a book collector. I know, my wallet's crying, but I definitely spend um, probably too much money on like special editions and multiple editions and just books that I think are pretty. I will buy them and it brings me immense happiness. So we're gonna talk about all of those. I hope you guys are excited. I think I have around 300 books. So we are just going to get into it. We're gonna go shelf by shelf and talk about some books today, which I'm so excited. Okay, so this first shelf that I have here, I really don't have like too, too much to say about it, but it's just like hardbacks. Basically, they're all from Book of the Month, aside from this one, which is uh, an Illumicrate version of the Book Eaters, which is really pretty and I love the sprayed edges on it. So I kind of just, oops, face it out like this. But there's not like too much going on on this shelf aside from this plant, which I've had for like three years at this point. So it's been with me through a lot and I love it. It's just like a pothos. Moving down, I have my tiny bookshelf, which I love this shelf so much. I also have this candle, which does it work? Oh, it does work. Oh, that's fun. Most of these are dead because I forget to turn them off, but it's nice that this one works. This shelf mainly consists of mass market paperbacks, which is like most of this stack and just like small editions of classics. Like they come this way. They're supposed to be that small. And I love this shelf so much because I love tiny books. Also, I think mass market paperbacks definitely have like some of the coolest covers because they're all like kind of vintagey looking. And every time I go into like a thrift store or half price, I will look for mass market paperback versions of my favorite classics or just classic that I haven't read yet. That is also a thing that I do. But to point out a few covers that I really like, both of these editions of Northanger Abbey I think are very pretty. I love, oops, I love the architecture of this building and this is one of the um, vintage classic editions of Jane Austen's works and I really love them. I also really like this really tiny version of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I just think the cover is super cool. And I also have some of these little Penguin Black classics which I really like collecting. Um, reading them I'm not so good at, but collecting them is always fun. And then over here I have like these small poetry books, which I think are really cute. I have all of my Stephen King mass market paperbacks, which admittedly, well actually I've read three of these. That's pretty good. But this purple edition of Pet Cemetery is actually the very first Stephen King book I ever read, and this is the one that I read it from. And I really hated this cover originally, but it grew on me. And I'm really glad that I still have it, so. That is all of my tiny books. Moving down we have my vampire shelf, which is my absolute well, actually, okay, this is like, I have like three shelves. Actually, I have like a bunch of shelves that I'll probably say are my favorite shelves, but this is definitely a contender. I love this shelf. Just like all of the black and red is so stunning. But as for little trinkets, I have this little Halloween trick-or-treater ghost guy that I think my grandma painted and I found it in my parents' stuff. And I was like, that's cute and spooky. I'm stealing it. <laughs> but I have so many favorite editions on this shelf. Obviously the first one we have is this edition of Dracula that is displayed. It's absolutely stunning. I think this was, when was this published? Okay, this was published by Penguin in 1979 and it is my favorite edition of Dracula I've ever seen. I just think it's so cool. I love the text, I love the font, I love this creepy hand coming out of the coffin. Like every time I look at it, I get really happy. I also recently bought myself the Penguin cloth bound edition of Dracula, which I've been wanting to get for the longest time. I ended up getting it for myself for graduation. I wrote like a little note in it, which I really liked doing. Also for the longest time, I had no idea what was like actually on the cover of this book, but it turns out they're garlic flowers, which definitely <laughs> makes sense. Then I also have my copy of Fangs here, which is absolutely stunning. I love the cloth bound. I love oh, just the red, it's so good. 
We also have a Dowry of Blood here, Dracul, which I also loved, and this cover is also sick. And there are just so many good books on this shelf. I've read a lot of them. I also have King of Battle and Blood. <laughs> which I literally bought specifically to put on the shelf because I thought the cover would go really well. And I, you know, I decently like this book. It's also signed, which is kind of fun. No, that's not the, where is it? Here we go. This are the Vampire Diaries of so many good books. It's representing like all of my favorite vampire stuff, you know? And that's why the shelf makes me unbelievably happy when I look at it. <laughs> Moving down again, we have my historical romance shelf, which I also love this shelf so much. It's not like a favorite shelf, but it does bring me immense happiness every time I look at it. Because we have, you know, the Veronica Speedwell series, we have the Dangerous Damsel series, and let me just say, the covers for these books are absolutely stunning. I mean, like, look at these. This one is my favorite cover, though, because it's, like, purple. And then we also have another favorite from this year, which is Emily Wise Encyclopedia of Fairies. I actually recently bought the UK cover of this as well because it's also really pretty and it will be joining the shelf very soon. Then we have another one of my favorite shelves which no surprise here it's my Yona of the Dawn shelf. Never thought I would get into collecting manga but here we are. I have my absolute favorite cover on display. Then we also have just a bunch of other volumes with covers that I really liked. I decided I would only collect the volume. Oh my god. Hi. Winnie has come into the room as I'm filming this so if you feel the camera moving don't mind her. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. I decided that I was only gonna collect volumes of this manga that I loved. So all of these have stunning covers, but let me show you some of my favorites. Volume six, it's just so cute. Volume 24, I think has a good cover. Yes, look at them, oh my God. And any more? I think volume 30 also has a good one. Oh. Absolutely. I love the art style for this series so much. So when I started reading it and like becoming obsessed with it, I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll buy some volumes of it. Moving down, I don't want to call this like picture books because I don't actually have any picture books on here, but they're like books with pictures, <laughs> meaning they're like art books, very random books I found at the thrift store, graphic novels, manga, like that kind of thing. So I have some good stuff on here. I have my Art of Howl's Moving Castle book, which is very pretty. We have some, you know, house plant books that I found at the thrift store one day and I liked. We have all of the Heartstopper graphic novels, volume one of the Inferno Devices manga. We have some other good stuff. We have this little um, Charlie Brown Christmas thing that I found at an antique mall and I thought was really cute and I needed it. And then we also have like Alice in Wonderland here with this really cool edition. I have no idea what this edition is, but my mom bought it for me when I was like six. Still haven't read it. So maybe this is the oldest book on my TBR. Who knows? And then we also have a little Santa Claus sitting here that my friend gave me last Christmas and it sits on this little Nightmare Before Christmas manga. Oh, I also have the obligatory Oh, The Places You'll Go book, which I got for a high school graduation, I think. My mom wrote me a little note in it and it was really cute. So I also keep that on this shelf. So this top shelf here starts off my fantasy shelf, meaning every single shelf on this shelf is fantasy. <laughs> Um, if that wasn't evident enough, but on this shelf, I just have US fantasy paperbacks and they're all the same size and it's very satisfying. <laughs> but as for like little trinkety things that I have on here, I do have this little Triwizard Cup, which is really cute and very small. Like I said earlier, I love small things. So I love this. And then I also have this little locket here, which is Isabel Lightwood's demon detecting necklace from the Shadowhunters Chronicles. And I have a plant, which I believe some kind person in one of my videos told me this was a satin pothos. So thank you. But I put it in this like little ghost mug because I think it's cute. But up here I have a lot of Cassandra Clare books. We have the Mortal Instruments series. We have the Inferno Devices. And you're probably like, Katie, why do you have two editions of the exact same version of Clockwork Prince? Well, let me tell you, friends. One of these, which is this one, Cass gave to me. Because when we first met up, we annotated a book in each other's favorite series. And obviously mine is TID. So she annotated this and it's really fun. And she also, if I can find it, here we go. Well, first of all, she wrote that, it's cute. And then she also drew this, which I also think is so cute. And then the other one I just had and I refuse to get rid of them because I don't want to. And we also have Ghosts of the Shadow Market and I don't love Cassandra Clare's like short story collections, but if you liked the Inferno Devices, you gotta read this book, guys. Like, just trust me. Then we have more things. The other Throne of Glass books, I have duplicates of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, but these are paperbacks and the ones that I originally read out of. And we have Vampire Academy. 
obviously love love vampire academy so obviously here we have my black white and red shelf a lot of these are victoria schwab books some of them aren't which we'll talk about but these are where most of my ve schwab books are i have the blue edition like the uk cover of Addie larue so it doesn't fit like with these books but this is the rest of them essentially so we have like shades of magic vicious we have the original cover of vicious because i think this one is a lot cooler than the normal one that you can get. I also have this random UK cover of Vengeful, which I also think is really sick. Also over here, I have the Illumicrate edition of Gallant, which is also very pretty. I love the sprayed edges on it. I think it's super cool. And under the dash jacket, actually, it also looks really, ooh, forgot I had things in there. Um, look, very cool. But let's see what was in here. Oh, I have a buy one fresh baked cookie get one free coupon from barnes and noble and my gallant sticker that i got when i bought the u.s hardback but i actually ended up selling the u.s hardback because i like this one more and then over here we have more things going on first of all we do have this like mug which is also from a little crate i know this is based off of i don't know what the series is called but it has gideon the ninth in it but it was like red and white and black so i was like obviously it's gotta go on the shelf. But we have my original hardbacks of the Shadow and Bone series. I tracked these down because I think they're so much better than the new covers that they have. I think I found Rune and Rising and Siege and Storm at half price for $10 each, which I was like, you're actually joking. But I love this series, so I'm glad to have these. And then I also have my Good Girl's Guide to Murder series as well, which just fits so well with the theme. I love the black, white, and red so much. And then over here we have more books most importantly <laughs> the fifth book in the vampire academy series spirit bound cass um very kindly <laughs> gifted me this book for christmas last year because she knows i hate this cover and now it is a part of my collection so thanks cass but i also get to keep her little note in it which i do think is fun and then lastly on the shelf i do have another little book pot from illumicrate which i keep just more bookmarks in here we have what probably like is my favorite shelf because this is my last hours and in front of devices shelf i know i i think i went a little bit crazy <laughs> i have way too many editions of these books i know like literally enough editions of two series to fill up one shelf but I love this shelf and it brings me a lot of happiness. So I also have no regrets. But let's talk about these because I have a lot of special editions going on. But over here, first of all, we have this little Shadow Hunters Codex pot thing that Illumicrate put in there in front of Vice's box. And I just like hold bookmarks and such in here, which I like. And then also, I didn't really know what to do with this space over here, so I decided I should put Great Expectations and A Tale of Two Cities on the shelf because these are the books that these series are based off of. And it was honestly really nice of Penguin to make these books in colors that complement the rest of my editions. But moving on to these editions that I have going on here. Obviously, I have like the normal standard hardbacks. We already know what those look like. But Cass gifted me the tour edition of Chain of Gold for our one year friendship anniversary and it's so pretty so i'm blaming her for my purchase of the tour editions of the two others in the series but look at them they're so stunning I like the foiling the silhouettes i mean i just oh, they're so pretty and i have no regrets absolutely none But I also have the Waterstones exclusive edition of Chain of Iron. I think this one is so pretty. I love like the moths on it and I'm a big fan. We also have the Waterstones exclusive edition of Chain of Thorns as well. Then we also have the Illumicrate edition of Chain of Thorns as well with the pink sprite edges. It's also, I think, stamped. Is it stamped? Yeah. There we go. And I think, yeah, those are all of these special editions that I have of The Last Hours. There aren't like a ton of special editions for the Infernal Devices, which if you guys don't know, is my absolute favorite series of all time. But I've done my best to track them down. And the only one that I have on this shelf is the 10th anniversary edition of Clockwork Angel. I know there is an edition of this that Illumicrate did that has like sprayed edges, which are gears, which is really cool, but I do not currently own that. Maybe one day though. <laughs> and then I just have like the normal standard US hardbacks. And then we also have this little duck, which I found in my parents' attic. I thought it was very fitting for the shelf. If you know, you know, but you probably do know. Here we have what I hesitate to call one of my favorite fantasy shelves because it does have like some of my favorite fantasy on it, but some of these I don't really care for. Not naming names or anything. <laughs> now I know you're probably like, Katie, if you don't like the Crescent City series that much, 
Why does it have such a prominent spot on your bookshelves? Look how good it looks next to my editions of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Like the blue and the red. Oh, it's just so good. Like they look too good together not to do it. And it's really hard to find a place where like these really like vibrant blues and reds work in a fantasy shelf because they're all like pretty dark normally. So this is good. I'm fine with this. But on the shelf, we do have some of my prized possessions being my UK cover hardback of Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. It's also signed, which is really fun as well. Uh, oh, no, that's the, <laughs> that's the, uh, I have this book like flipped upside down in the dust jacket because the sprite edges are like faded on the top. So I wanted it to, I wanted it to look nice. Okay. But it is, if I could find the front page. Yes. Okay. There it is. It is signed by Lainey Taylor which I love. And I don't even care that I have to flip it upside down in the dust jacket because I'm so excited just to have it. And we also have Muse of Nightmares in the UK hardback as well. Then over here, we also have the fifth anniversary editions of Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows. These are the first two books in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. I just think these are absolutely so stunning. Like the foiling, like this brassy color on Lord of Shadows, I love. And I also have a little sword sticking out of this one because I didn't know what to do with my tiny sword. <laughs> I like this. I'm a really big fan of these. And the one for Queen of Air and Darkness just got announced and it is also so stunning. So it will be joining me very soon. Then on the shelf, I do have a recent purchase, which certainly broke the bank. And that is this fairy loot edition of Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I mean, I saw these sprayed edges, like these little letters. I was like, oh my God, I needed it. It's also got like really pretty, um, and paper art and like under the dust jacket it's really pretty as well and like I spent too much money on this but it's stunning and I have no regrets honestly because I read this and I gave it a five star so good purchase and then I also have one of my other favorite series which is the folk of the air series love these absolutely stunning we also have the celestial kingdom duology and priory Ooh. Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is such a sick cover. Here I have what is like almost completely all fantasy aside from the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, which is more of like a um, historical romance type of mystery situation, which I really love. But my absolute favorite book out of this series, which I also love the cover for, is Hunting Prince Dracula. And I actually have two copies of this because when I bought the hardback of Escaping from Houdini off of Pango last year, they just threw in this arc they had of Hunting Prince Dracula. And I was like, first of all, that's so cool. But it was signed and I was like, you're actually joking. Like that is so cool. And this is one of like my favorite books that I own, honestly, because this was one of my favorite books of last year. And the fact that I have a signed arc of it, I just like, I love it. <laughs> then we have some Shadowhunters books. We have some Margaret Rogerson. We have some Shay Earnshaw. I love this cover of The Wicked Deep so much. I think it's so pretty. And then under the dust jacket, hello. Look at that. Oh my God, it's just so pretty. And then lastly over here, I have the tiniest book I own. <laughs> Mysteries of the- well actually I don't know why I said that. This is not the tiniest book I own. This might be the tiniest fantasy book that I own. It's adorable. Honestly, I will mention every single time how small it is because I'm obsessed. <laughs> I mean look, I mean look, it's just so short. Oh my god. And then I also have this little mug filled with fake lilac, I guess. It goes with the purple on it, so I really like that. I have no idea how to frame these lower shelves, so please bear with me. Also, Winnie wants to say hi. <laughs> Girlie, I'm trying to film. Oh, but you can stay. She really wants me to pet her, I think. But we have more fantasy down here. Obviously, we have a bunch of Brandon Sanderson UK paperbacks, which I absolutely love. I think my favorite one is Warbreaker. Like, I also just love my annotations in it. So I'm like, I love this book. But then we also have, I think, the UK cover for Caraval. It's like the split black and white, which I think is really cool. And I think there's something under here. Right. Yeah, there's a little tent, which I think is cute. I found this on eBay for like 15 bucks one day. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I need that. We also have, you know, like some Lee Bardugo books. We have Skyward. This is also the UK cover, which I also love. I have yet to read this. And then over here we have all of my hardback Throne of Glass books. I do have the others in paperback, but I just, I had these in hardback. And we also have this little sword, which I think is a replica of someone's sword in this series. I don't know, but I got it in an Illumicrate box and I was like, hey, I should put this with my Throne of Glass books. Admittedly, I haven't read do you mind? Wanna play with the sword? Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> okay, no. 
I didn't know you had a penchant for violence, but I have not completely finished Throne of Glass yet. I'm actually still halfway through Empire of Storms. My bookmark is still there. It's even a Throne of Glass bookmark. I just have not con continued the series. Oops. Um, one day, maybe. <laughs> It'll happen. So obviously over here we have my A Court of Thorns and Roses shelf. I'm actually currently in the middle of a reread of A Court of Mist and Fury right now. It's so good. <laughs> But I also have this cover of A Chord of Silver Flames. I'm just not a super huge fan of the original cover for this book, so I found this one on Etsy, and I'll definitely link it if anybody wants to check it out. Also, another exciting book on this shelf is this copy of A Court of Frost and Starlight. Cass, I don't know why, but she had two copies of this. So she sent me this, like, last April, which is, like, one of our first interactions as friends, and she always jokes that she bought my friendship with this book, and I think it's really funny. And then I also have this little jar of confetti, which I do sometimes use for like my journaling thumbnails, but I just keep it here, seems right. So this shelf obviously has no books on it. It's mainly just a, um, a plant shelf, and I actually recently got this little pot thing from Illumicrate, which I thought was really pretty, and I just put a bunch of like tabs and such in there, and I really like it actually. I'm a big fan of this. This is a recent edition and I like it a lot. So this shelf right here is like my just pink and purple books. And we also have this little like fairy house thing that I got from Dollar General. This is literally like $1.25 <laughs> and it's so cute. But we have, a, we have a lot of good books going on, okay. So we have some of, what is this series called? Is it just called the Once Upon a Broken Heart series? I think these are the Barnes and Noble, yeah, exclusive editions of this series. This one's also signed by Stephanie Garber, which is really fun. There it is, but these are super pretty and I can't wait to get the matching one for um, A Curse for True Love, that's what it's called. We also have the Waterstones exclusive edition of The Ballad Never After. It has the super pretty um, design under the heart. Oh my God, there we go. Uh, on the hardcover, and it's a dragon. I mean, like, look at this. It's so pretty. I'm still not over it, honestly. <laughs> oh yeah, and this one's also signed by Stephanie Garber, which is really fun. I like that her pen color matches like the cover of the book. That's really fun because this one was purple and this one's like pink, love it. But this is honestly just like such a stunning addition on its own. We also have Foul Lady Fortune, which Cass sent to me. I think I have her little note in here. There it is. We also have Wicked Fox. Ooh, The Astonishing Color of After, which I just recently read. This one's also signed by the author, which is really fun. I didn't even know it was signed by the author when I bought it. It's like eight bucks from half price, but I was like, that's a nice surprise. Here we have my other prize possessions, which are my Illumicrate versions of the Infernal Devices. Look at them. Ah, look at the, oh, the sprayed edge. I mean, come on now. Like, it's just, oh, I just love this series so much, so I had to do it. How did I have these? How did I do this? Oh, I forgot what they looked like. Was it like this? No, I don't remember what these look like, honestly. <laughs> and then we also have my very tiny version of the Midnight Air, which is a story from the Bane Chronicles, but they printed it in its own little like book. And it's so cute. <laughs> they actually did two of these kind of books from the Bane Chronicles. And I actually recently ordered the other one because previously I was finding it for like a hundred bucks. And I was like, absolutely not. But I recently found one on eBay for like $9. So I don't know what's up with that, but I'm just gonna not ask questions. And then honestly, this shelf is looking kind of sparse. I need more middle grade, but recently I actually unhauled a decent amount of my middle grade just because I was never gonna read it, but I kept some of my faves. And then we have Anne of Green Gables, which I think the cover of this is super pretty and I can't wait to actually read it. And then on display here, we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I absolutely love the Ghibli movie. Read the book last year, also really liked it. So it gets its own little display because Howl's Moving Castle is one of my favorite movies. So I feel like it's, it's representative of that. And then down here, I have like a bunch of um, Greek things and Silas, which is my little dragon that Cass gave me for Christmas. She has a matching one. His name's Norman. But I took a few like Greek literature classes in college and I really loved them. So I kept a ton of the books that I used for them. So we have like this copy of the Odyssey. We have some Plato. What else? Oh, we have The Last Olympian, which is the last book in the Percy Jackson series. I literally have three copies of like the Iliad and the Odyssey for whatever reason, I don't know. But this is the one that I read out of. It's kind of ugly, but you can see all my tabs and whatnot. But I do love like looking back through like all of my annotations and whatnot, just because I think it's really fun. And I miss my Greek classes. I wish I'd taken more, honestly. But also on this shelf, I do have sprinkled throughout like journals that I just didn't know what to do with. So this was a bullet journal that I kept for a while. This was my reading journal from 2021, I think. Good stuff. And then I also have my reading journal from 2020. So these kind of just hang out here. 
because I didn't know what to do with them. <laughs> okay, so up here we just have another fantasy shelf. First of all, we have my little skeleton. His name's Benny, just hanging out here, but I'll move him for the time being. But we have some books. Then we also have the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. I've read the first two and I absolutely loved them. So obviously I need to continue. And then we actually have my current read, which is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. As you can see, I started annotating it and everything. And it's been really fun so far. Moving down, we have my classic shelf. Also, if you can see Benny's little tootsies there, don't, don't mind. Oh, this one also turns on. I might, like, that's very surprising. But this is, did I already say this is my classic shelf? I have no idea, but this is my classic shelf. And the, like the big thing I have on here is this strawberry teapot that my mom gave me. And I don't know what to do with it. Now, it originally was on top of my bookshelves, but I ran out of space, so it's kind of just hanging here for now. But I, you know, I do like reading classics every now and then, but I feel like I have more classics than I should for somebody who doesn't read a ton of them. But we're just gonna go through these because I have a lot of editions that I really like. I have all of my Lord of the Rings books. So we have the normal three books, we have some editions of The Hobbit, and then we also have this like little short story. Oh, they have illustrations. Oh, that's fun. The little dragon. <laughs> oh, it's got somebody's like, oh, I never saw this. How have I not seen this? But it's a little like from the library of sticker. That's so cute. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander Gray, for allowing me to uh, have your book. <laughs> and then we have a stack of some various different editions. This edition of A Christmas Carol, I've had for a really long time. I think I got it when I was like eight, maybe, but I think it's really pretty and I really like it. And I also just really like A Christmas Carol in general. And then I also found this book at a library sale last year and it's old christmas by washington irving who also wrote uh the legend of sleepy hollow but i just thought this was really cute it's got little illustrations in it as well which i thought was just really quaint and i really want to read this at christmas so over here we actually have my favorite editions of classics these are the penguin english library editions i have some recent additions to my editions we have the moonstone by Wilkie Collins, which I've been wanting to read some Wilkie Collins for a long time because I know he writes like mystery-ish novels and I'm really excited about that. And then I also recently picked up Lady Audley's Secret, which I actually already know what Lady Audley's Secret is thanks to the Infernal Devices, but I think this is considered a sensationalist novel? I don't know, but I thought it sounded fun. And then we also just have some others, which I've definitely talked about on my channel already. Then we also have this edition of Wuthering Heights, which I think is like in collab, I don't know if it's in collaboration, but they're supposed to look like the Twilight covers. So it's got like the same font and everything. And I found this at a thrift store and I had to pick it up. I know there's more of these. I just don't have them. And some other things we have this edition of A Christmas Carol, which is from Vintage Classics. I know they have more editions of Charles Dickens's work, but I just really liked this one. And then we also have some Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions with these really cool covers. I'm a big fan of these, even though my copy of Dracula, it's seen better days, but it's still a really cool cover. And then we just have like other classics and poetry. We do have some Mary Oliver there. Okay, moving on down here, we have just a random assortment of paperbacks. The only thing these things have in common really is that they're paperbacks. For a while, I had like romance books or like books with romance as a subplot for like my normal paperback shelf, but now it's just kind of whatever. We also have my little ghosty on the shelf as well. He also turns on and looks like he's having a little rave in there. Can you see that? There you go. But on this shelf, we have, we have some fun stuff. First of all, one of my favorite editions on my shelf, it's of a book that I haven't even read, but it's of the Night Circus. I think this is the Halloween edition, but it's super cool and I love the red sprayed pages on it. I have actually started this book and I made it up to page 214, but I need to restart it because I have, I fell off with it. We also have some of my Lainey Taylor books. We have Muse of Nightmares with all of my lovely annotations in it. Also on Fear the Flames here, I have this really tiny, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this, um, like crown bead, which I think is so cute. So I just keep it there. I have this arc of Under the Whispering Door that I won in a Goodreads giveaway, which is really exciting. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, we have a Strange and Dreamer. Ooh, retrying that. I have Strange and Dreamer. I think I dented it a little bit. Did I? No, it seems fine actually. But absolutely love this book. It has all of my annotations in it and all my little doodles and whatnot. Oh. I love this copy of this book so much. And this is the UK paperback, but it's so floppy. Oh, it's so good. And we also have that edition of Addie LaRue I was talking about. This is the UK hardcover, I think, but I just liked it a lot more than the US one. And then the last thing of note on this shelf, I think is the fifth anniversary edition of Strange the Dreamer, which is like this, um, 
silvery, whatever. I really hope they do a fifth anniversary edition for Muse of Nightmares this year. I don't know if they will, but I'm gonna hope for it. <laughs> then we have my horror shelf. Obviously here we have Bunny on display because I think the cover of this book is so stunning. Like the black and the peach and the hot pink, just something about it really does something for me. So she gets a moment there. And then also on this shelf, oops, I have this little button and it says it is getting closer. And I got this for my dad because he's working in a bookstore in the year that it came out. And I think they all got these. It's like promo, whatever, but I really liked it. So I'm glad I have a little button for it. But on the shelf, we have some good stuff. We have some Grady Hendrix. We have some random books. We have, you know, some Bray Bradbury. Here's one of my favorite covers of his books. I think it's super cool. And then we also have one of my other favorite covers, which is this edition of Pet Cemetery, which I think is absolutely sick and I freaking love it. Another one of my favorite editions on the shelf is my edition of Salem's Lot. I loved this book and I love this cover. I just think like the, the little design in here, I literally, I have this little framed picture of the design that's in the O because I think it's so cool. It like shows the town that this book takes place in and I just love it. And then honestly, from here on down, it gets a little dicey because these are the two shelves that my chair normally sits in front of. So I don't really see this side of the shelf. But over here in like the area that you can kind of see when my chair is here, we have my Twilight books and my very sick covers. In the comments on the video of what I got these covers, somebody told me they were the ugliest thing they've ever seen. And I was like, thank you, I know. <laughs> No, I do love those, honestly. And we have like the inheritance games. We have some books that I didn't know what to do with. And it's it's a mess. We're gonna, I'd say we're gonna move on to the next shelf, but it's not much better. So on this shelf, we have like my illustrated Harry Potter books. We have a tiny little night bus, which is kind of cute. We have some books that I'm selling. If anyone wants to check out my Pango, I'm selling these books, all of them selling most of these books. Oh, I also have this little cat doorstop, which you can't really see that well. Hang on. Okay, it just holds up these books because they're super freaking heavy. So this is like really good for that. And then over here I have more random things such as this like deck of information about Greek gods and monsters and whatever, which is really fun. So like, if you ever like, hey, I wanna learn about uh, Heracles, here you go, or Hercules, whatever you wanna call him. And then lastly, really exciting, I have an engineering design textbook, which I refuse to get rid of because I annotated it a lot and it's really satisfying and it makes me feel like I did something in my four years of college. But that also just kind of stays there because I don't know what to do with it. Okay, so uh, there we have it. That is my bookshelf tour. I'm so grateful that I have these shelves. I'm so grateful that I have so many books and I'm so happy that I finally got an opportunity to share some of them with you guys. So I really hope you did enjoy. Also do keep in mind, I do have like some stacks of books like around my room that I don't have on my shelves. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do let me know down below, uh, what do your bookshelves look like? I know that's an incredibly vague question, but just let me know, like how do you organize them? Do you have any special favorite additions? Do you have any favorite shelves? I would love to know all about it. Please let me know. But aside from that, don't forget, I did recently start a Patreon. If you guys want any extra content, monthly buddy reads, readathons, or also journaling videos, that's on there too. Um, I will have that link down below. And yeah, aside from that, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video.